But we do start with our big story. President Biden joining the picket line outside Detroit as striking auto workers push the big three for historic pay raises, claiming record profits have not trickled down. So joining me now here is Democratic Congressman from Washington State, Derek Kilmer. Thank you so much for being here with us. And first, you know, I'd like to just get your thoughts on President Biden's appearance today on the picket line. I mean, is this really going to make a difference or is this just showmanship? Well, I think it's important that the president standing in solidarity with UAW workers who are advocating for fair wages and for fair benefits and for good working conditions. You know, these are hardworking folks who are the backbone of our automotive industry. And I think the fact that the president has shown up is just another indication of him being one of the uh, strongest pro-worker presidents in the history of this country. And you have to wonder how that resonates with other uh, striking unions across this country. But also, you know, the president siding with the auto workers today, but he's still, he's pushed these billions of dollars in electric vehicle subsidies for the auto industry. That is taxpayer money that union workers say hurts their future. They say it doesn't trickle down to them. So how do Democrats square continuing these subsidies while also supporting the striking workers? Well, I think there's job opportunities here. As the industry transitions to more electric vehicles, there is extraordinary potential for job creation in battery production, in electric infrastructure, in electric vehicle assembly. You know, we should be preparing our workers for these jobs, not just of the future, but these are jobs of today. These are hot selling items that are only growing, particularly as folks are trying to drive more fuel efficient vehicles, trying to reduce how much they're spending on gasoline. And I would rather see these, these vehicles built right here in the United States of America rather than someplace else. And that's really the thinking behind the Inflation Reduction Act and some of the investments that have been made. And, uh, you know, EV gets more attention as we see these really high gas prices yet again. Uh, now let's talk about that critical deadline looming on Saturday to avoid a government shutdown. House Republicans so far unable to align behind a spending measure. You have helped launch a new congressional caucus uh, with the goal of fixing Congress. Quite a task. Uh, but what are you and other members doing to try to actually fix this mess right now brewing on the Hill? Well, let me say up front, a uh, government shutdown is really damaging. I represent, you know, the largest employer in my district is the federal government. I represent a large naval shipyard. I represent uh, folks who work for the Forest Service, for the National Park Service. Not only are federal workers impacted, but our local community and local businesses are impacted if there's a government shutdown. So one, it's important to recognize that this is not a nothing burger. This is something that really impacts our economy and impacts workers. And second, this is entirely avoidable. I'm a member of the New Democrat Coalition. Our coalition, 98 members strong, sent a letter to the speaker saying, let's pass bipartisan spending bills. The Senate has done that, consistent with an agreement that was made back in May. House Democrats are prepared to do that. And unfortunately, what we're seeing is the holdup is really only the most extreme members of the House Republicans convincing the entire House majority to renege on a bipartisan agreement. If we just go back to the bipartisan agreement from May, I think we can pass spending bills that can pass the House, pass the Senate, and be signed by the president, averting a shutdown. All right. Well, it, again, is approaching ever so quickly. Also, let's talk about this new ABC News Washington Post poll that shows President Biden trailing Donald Trump by nearly 10 percentage points in a political, uh, in a potential 2024 rematch. So when you see those numbers, how concerning is that for you and fellow Democrats? And do you see this as a vote against Biden, you know, or as a vote for Trump? Well, listen, I think the Biden administration's work has been historic. Every day we're hearing about new investments across our country to build new roads and highways, to get folks connected to Internet, to reduce gun violence. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act that I mentioned uh, is reducing the cost of prescription drugs. All of these things that have passed in the last in the first two years of the administration are just now being implemented. And I think as these uh, historic laws are being implemented, the American people are going to, I think, really appreciate how much it reduces costs for them, how much it grows the economy for them, how much it makes their communities more secure, safer. Uh, all of these things, I think, are going to demonstrate progress, and I think that will benefit the president come next November. 
All right, we'll have to see. Uh, also, look, there's a lot of talk about age right now in politics. Uh, our same poll that we're talking about shows that 74% of voters say that President Biden is too old for a second term. Uh, that's an increase, by the way, of six points since May. So let me ask you, is Biden too old? And what about other aging Democrats like Senator Dianne Feinstein and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi? How does age playing in? You know, the, when I hear from my constituents, what they care about is not the age of the people representing them. What they care about is how new their ideas are and whether they're going to bat for them. And I think we've seen out of the president an agenda that has been really focused on the people, on uh, on reducing costs, on creating economic opportunity, on making communities safer and more secure. And I think that's really the focus of the folks that I represent. All right, Representative Derek Hilmer, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And now I want to bring our big story to our panel. So joining us today is ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse, Democratic strategist Peely Tobar, ABC News contributor and former Republican Virginia Congresswoman Barbara Comstock, and contributing political correspondent Rachel Bade. Thank you all so much for being here. So Peely, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on President Biden standing in solidarity with the striking auto workers on the picket lines today. Look, he had a lot of things to say. Is he doing anything to back it up? Well, he has. If you look historically at what he's done throughout his presidency, uh, President Biden has stood with uh, with union workers from day one. There's a reason why we say that he is the most pro-union president in history. And I think what you, sh what you saw today is not showmanship, it is that that is who he actually is, and he mm. is willing to put his money where his mouth is and, and show up and stand behind these workers. Because as he said before, uh, union workers built the middle class, and he is going to continue supporting them in the way he has so far. And Rachel, to you, let's talk about this government shutdown. Obviously, it's looming. There's no clear path to a resolution right now. The House is expected, though, to launch an evening vote. Uh, do they have the support needed to avert a shutdown? Well, leadership in McCarthy's inner circle certainly thinks that they do have the votes to move this forward. And, you know, last time around, they thought they had the votes as well, and it ended up being a big surprise and a big embarrassment on the floor. But look, I think it's important to remember that even if they can clear this big procedural vote they have tonight, what they're doing right now does nothing in terms of averting a government shutdown at the end of the week. I mean, the reality is these bills that they are passing up here, uh, they are never going to pass in the Democratic-led Senate. Uh, the Biden White House is not going to sign them into law, and they have to negotiate something bipartisan if they want to keep the government open. McCarthy, the speaker, is just not interested in doing that right now. And Barbara, to you, you know, we just heard from Congressman Kilmer there, and he touted some of these things like the economy um, when he talked about things that the Biden administration was doing well. He also said that the age really isn't important to his constituents. Uh, what do you think is important to voters right now? And when you're talking about Republicans, you know, do they care about Trump's indictments? Well, listen, I think the pictures you just showed of President Biden in Michigan um, those are great pictures, particularly for Michigan, because what's going to matter are these few key states. And Michigan is a state that Joe Biden really improved from 2016 to 2020. He won it by three percentage points and 154,000 votes when Trump only won it by 10 percent. That was the most narrow victory in 2016. So the Republican Party in Michigan has gotten virtually wiped out because of MAGA Republicans. It is essentially bankrupt. They lost the state house entirely in 2022 because of MAGA Republicans taking over the party. So while Donald Trump's going to go up there, um, I guess, tomorrow, he doesn't have a Republican Party that has a dime to it. And, um, you know, the governor and all the state officials are all Democrats right now. And he has essentially wiped them out. And he's raising all the money for his defense. And he just happened to get a lot, another bad verdict over in New York today, being a bad mm -hmm. businessman. So he doesn't have a lot to sell to them. And Mike, let's take this to you. Let's talk about age yet again here. You know, we, we heard from the congressman there in Washington. Uh, he said that age isn't really something that he's hearing about from his constituents. Uh, what do you think Americans are? Do you think that Americans are in line with our ABC poll that says clearly it's more of an issue for them now than it was a few months ago? 
Yeah, I think also too, if I can just add to that further, it's, it's a dynamic of both age and term limits. And I think that the American public mm -hmm. and the way we've been looking at it has been conflating the two. And so I think we have to create a separate dynamic when it comes to that. I think what Americans are really trying to say, it may not have the language for is how do we implement term limits for our elected officials? And what we have to be honest with the American public is, is how difficult it is to insert a age limits, term limits, because that is a constitutional amendment that would take two-thirds mm -hmm. of the House so there's the Senate, and then also to a large share of a certain amount of state legislators, or like 65, uh, about certain amount of le state legislators, excuse me, Kena, uh, will have to pass and support uh, that constitutional amendment. So it is a large hill to climb, uh, but I think America is ready to have that conversation on a constitutional amendment to term limits. Potentially, Mike Muse, Peely Tobar, Barbara Comstock, and Rachel Babe, thank you, and don't go anywhere. We have a lot more to talk about throughout the show. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.